Hungry for the best barbecue in Las Vegas? Come out to the infamous barbecue and meat market, John Moles Meats and Roadkill Grill in Las Vegas. John Moles was featured on the Food Network's Diners, Drive-Ins, and Dives. Now take home delicious meat selections for your grill, and while you're there, grab a bite of the best barbecue in Las Vegas. With two locations now at Tom and Gowan or on North Decatur, you're sure to find the perfect meats for your next barbecue or party. Find us online at johnmolemeats.com. Buckle up, let's go for a ride. It's the Wayne Coy Show. Since we look forward to the most is whenever this guy rolls in, Matt Neverett from the loved, beloved, I'm going to go as far as say beloved Las Vegas Aviators. Last time I talked to you, you guys were on the Schneid. You got off of that, though. Yeah, winners of uh, seven of their last 10 and kind of turning the tide more so on the offensive end. Still some struggles with the pitching, partially due to the fact that a handful of starters have already been called up to the major leagues in some spot start roles. And the the bullpen was always going to be an issue coming into the season. But some of the bats are starting to turn around. Guys like Cody Thomas, who's uh, second in the league in RBIs, third in home runs to this point. Tyler Soderstrom doing well. Zach Geloff back fully healthy at 100% really every day, contributing at second base. And then some under-the-radar guys, Trenton Brooks, uh, the outfielder having an outstanding season. And former first-round pick J.J. Bladé of the Marlins uh, in his first year in the athletics organization, tearing the cover off the ball. He's had home runs in each of his last three games. He's got seven on the year to tie Thomas for the team's lead. So uh, really the offense turning the tide, if you will, for these guys so far. So with Bladé, was it just a case of he just needed a change of scenery to – because I know the A's kind of coveted him, right? They tried mm-hmm. to get him before and came up empty, and now they've got him, and he's playing up to every bit. In fact, he's exceeding the expectations. Yeah, and I mean, like you said, a change of scenery does a guy like that very well. He was in the major leagues with the Marlins last year and struggled offensively. So I think just the mix of getting a new, you know, new scenery, change of scenery, uh, whatever you want to call it, and uh, hitting in AAA just to kind of get his feet under him within the organization. He's a guy that I could absolutely see getting the call up uh, to Oakland at, at some point in the year, but he's always been a highly heralded guy. Fourth overall pick out of Vanderbilt, which is one of the top, if not the top, college baseball programs in the country right now. So he's always been a guy that's had high expectations, and uh, he's lived up to them so far, and he's doing a great job uh, both in left and center field this year. Matt, would you say that because of the uh, the the A's and their difficulties – uh, that the pipeline is is quicker because of that. So these guys are getting a look maybe sooner than they would have if they were, you know, the Dodgers. Yeah, in certain instances, I can absolutely see that being the case. And like I had mentioned with the starting pitching, especially uh, right now, three of the five guys in the major league rotation for the A's are the, the return in the Frankie Montes deal. J- Ken Waldachuk, J.P. Sears, and Luis Medina, who made his major league debut yesterday, but was optioned back down today, just up in a spot start. And uh, yeah, I, I do kind of tend to agree with you on that, that certain guys uh, in other organizations who may not have gotten a look quite as early are, are getting the opportunities because of the situation on the field in Oakland. Is Fuji uh, somebody who can't go down to AAA or or – I don't know how that works. When you bring them over from Japan, do they have to stay in the majors? No, no, nothing is saying that he has to stay. The The issue is, is they signed him to a one-year deal. And yeah. it was kind of a, a tryout year, if you will. And he's already been demoted, if you want to call it that, to the bullpen. And he threw yesterday for the first time out of the bullpen behind him. Looked pretty time. good, too, right? Yeah, I mean, he's lights out when he wants to be. I think the relief role may be kind of the niche that he settles into here uh, as we get into the middle part of the season. Because, uh, like I said, it's a one-year deal. They're paying him $3.2 million for the one year. So this is a tryout year for him. I would be interested to see if the if the athletics bring him back for another year, depending on how he goes to, you know, Still plenty of the season to go, so a lot of opportunity for a guy like him. But he is on a one-year deal. If they wanted to send him down, they could. And uh, I think that if he was signed to a multi-year deal originally, he probably would have started the season here in Las Vegas. But because it was a one-year deal, it was almost put up or shut up time for him. Yeah, now he's in A.J. Puck land, as I call it. You know, like, <laughs> is he a reliever? Is he a starter? Can we stretch him out? Should we keep him in these high-leverage situations, can he prove himself? And yeah, then, exactly. You know, the hope, of course, is that he turns into Sean Doolittle by the time it's over. <laughs> yeah, really. Hey, speaking of Sean, we'll switch gears here. Uh, well, first, let's talk about the homestand. So you're you're playing uh, who now? You're playing um, uh, Tacoma, Seattle's AAA. Tacoma, and then Albuquerque, right? Yeah, Albuquerque at the end of the month. Okay, that'll be the next. You'll go on the road, and then you come back again. Yeah, they go on the road to. Um, 
Let me take a look. Sacramento, they make their first oh. trip to Northern California of the season and then come back uh, to start May against Albuquerque here at home. Okay. So with the uh, situation that you have there, is there a point where I had to ask you this, I think, because you're in Las Vegas and the big team might be here too very soon. Mm -hmm. So if that's the case, are you right place, right time guy? It could be. You never know. Um, and it's it's been interesting to see how everything's transpired and developed throughout it. And, you know, far from complete. There are still so many questions that need to be answered as far as the stadium site, as far as when they're going to come, as far as where they'll play in the meantime. So uh, I would say at this point, there's still more questions than answers, but they're slowly starting to kind of check the boxes. I think the biggest uh thing that's going to be a holdup is where that public money is going to come from that they're asking for from the state. They're asking for half a billion dollars. And, you know, while the, the state seems committed to making it happen and they've said that they've got money and discretionary funds here, there and everywhere, uh, that that's, in my mind, the main question that still needs to be answered as far as getting the stadium built. And then let's see a rendering. I haven't seen a rendering. There's been nobody booked to build the ballpark, even to design the ballpark. So those are just some of the questions that, that, that still kind of remain here in the, the medium to long term. Right. I mean, in the past, and we've gone through this now three or four times, we've had not just renderings, but we know who the architecture firm is. We, we know a lot that we don't know this time around, and it's, it's very uh, disconcerting. It's a little strange to me, and they've got a, a short window of time because I think they said that the legislature is through the month of or beginning of June, right? And then after that, they don't get back together again for quite a while. So if you're going to try to get a shovel in the dirt, by 2024, you got to hurry up here. Exactly. And the, the A's have to make a decision by January of 2024 anyway, because if they don't, I believe that it's January 15th of 2024. It's sometime in mid-January uh, 2024. They lose out on the collective bargaining agreement uh, revenue sharing if they right. haven't made a decision by then. So that's kind of the imposed deadline by Major League Baseball as far as you know, they, they got to figure out what they're doing by then. I think that they'll have it settled one way or another way in advance of that. But there's still, you know, so many options on the table in the meantime. You like the organization? Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's a little interesting here because I've worked in uh, various minor league setups where sometimes you're owned by the parent club. Sometimes you're owned by a private company. Uh, Aviators owned by Howard Hughes Corporation who's done a great job in downtown Summerlin, right outside the Red Rock. And, you know, they're, they are an outstanding organization to work for. Uh, my affiliation with the athletics isn't nearly as much, but it is, it is great to, you know, meet the front office people when they come into town. I uh, got a chance to meet Dave Caval at a game last year. And, uh, you know, just kind of seeing some of the, the top prospects that are coming through the system. Because right now, most, if not all, the top five is here in Las Vegas or up in Oakland that we've had or in the last in year Oakland. or two. So we've seen a lot of, you know, stud top five type prospects over the last couple of years. I think that's been, at least in the short term, in my experience, my favorite part of being involved with the athletics. Well, what I was getting at, I guess, is because you do work for a different corporation and not for the parent team, you don't have to necessarily pull up the horsey like you might have to if you're on payroll, right? Yeah, um, exactly. But then again, you got to be thinking about, okay, if they do come here and there is an opening, if Ken Korak decides to retire and I'm in the right spot, then maybe it'd be probably a good idea that I was a pretty favorable all the way up until now, right? Yeah, exactly. I would, I would, I feel for you is what I'm saying. You can't, <laughs> you can't really let it all hang out like you might want to. I, and I mean, I get, you know, that's I get that. You know, especially on air during the games and the play by play. That's not uh, not necessarily my style. Every now and then, if it's warranted, I'll uh, rip on sure. somebody, but I try to keep it as positive as possible no matter what. You ever want to go full on Bob Euchre and just, you know, oh, start yeah. drinking heavily? Uh, especially some of these these AAA games with a lot of the watch. And I don't know if you got to, a chance to see our game last night on on, on Wednesday. Uh, 18 to 17 final. Aviators had 23 hits, which was too shy of the franchise record. So games like that, you kind of wish you could do something to make them go by a little faster. Yeah. Well, but a lot of excitement for the listener, right? I mean, yeah, you, exactly. you don't yeah, want to go away because you never know, you know, where this thing is going. But it's funny that the, the strike zone issues are – are not just here. They're they're with the big club as well. Obviously, I pay a little more attention there. Yeah. Ruiz last night with four stolen bases. That was pretty cool. Yeah, he was a guy that I was kind of surprised that they pushed him right up to the major leagues to start the season. But he's he's proven that he belongs there. He is a really really toolsy player. Puts the ball in play and runs. He's he's the fastest player on that team by by foot speed. So he's he's going to be really exciting. And then getting the chance, like we had said earlier, to develop at the major leagues with Oakland, he was in a different situation like he was in Milwaukee. He may not have gotten, you know, as early of an opportunity to, to show what he can do. And even with Oakland, he would have been possibly sitting behind Christian uh, Pache, but uh, 
they took care of that. So exactly opened yeah. up the door for him. But I, I'm excited because I was around when Ricky first came up and seeing him, you know, you got nothing else to play for. The, you go to the ballpark just hoping that this guy might get on and steal a bag or two because it's exciting to watch, you know. Oh, yeah, I like that sure. the stolen base seems to be coming back again. That's pretty cool. Oh, absolutely. So, so you and your dad, you're both sharing a vocation. Did you know all along, Matt, that you wanted to do what Pops did or did that did that come over the course? When did you figure it out? Probably sophomore, junior year of high school. I was fortunate enough when we moved from uh, Denver where my dad was doing sports talk radio, mostly full-time and a lot of college sports out there. Uh, we moved to Pittsburgh after my freshman year of high school when he got hired by the Pirates. And the the school district and the high school that I went to was lucky enough to have a, a local cable TV station. So I got involved uh, right away with the broadcast and the, the local news, if you will, the, the student newscast. Uh, I was the only sophomore or junior in the class. It was originally meant just for seniors. And kind of getting involved and starting to do some basketball games, starting with the women, uh, really kind of stuck into my mind is all right this is fun i like doing this uh, i've always enjoyed going to games with my dad and uh, at that point I'm, I'm trying to think before then the the options you know were wide open when we lived in denver i, I was interested in uh, potentially joining the air force becoming a, a fighter pilot i'm lucky enough to be the only one of you my look family. like a fighter pilot <laughs> well and i get confused for one a lot out here in vegas with Nel with nellis air force base i get asked sure. all the time but uh yeah i figured talking about sports would be a little bit better than getting shot at so uh, oh, you getting you the, made the right choice. Yeah, yeah getting the uh, experience definitely helped. And it, it helped with the college process as well, because I went in from before day one, knowing what I wanted to major in, knowing what I wanted to do for a career. So it kind of made things a little bit easier as far as that was concerned, knowing uh, how early what I wanted to do for a career. Did you ever, uh, well, have you ever worked with your dad in the booth? We've never called the same game. There's been a couple of times, uh, two years ago, I filled in for Oklahoma City when they, uh, played here. I know their broadcaster, Alex Friedman, pretty well, and he was the, the best man in his brother's wedding that week. So he asked me to fill in. So I was, I'm was i in the home radio booth now. I was about eight feet that way in the uh, visiting booth calling the games, and it was an uh, opportunity where my dad had some games off. So he came to town, and I, I interviewed him on the air. We didn't really do a lot of uh, you know play-by-play, color back and forth. And then the only other one is uh, we're involved with the, the Big West basketball tournament as well on the radio side. We run it. We run the network for Sirius XM nationally. Oh, wow. And uh, between him and me over the last couple of years, we've also called some games on uh, ESPN for the, the Big West tournament once they get to the later stages. So there was a game last year where – he was doing it on TV for ESPN, and I was doing it on uh, the Sirius National Radio broadcast. Oh, with the way the so, tables were, were set up, we were we happened to be right next to each other, so some people took some cool pictures of that. Was he listening to everything you were saying and just stealing your stuff? I think we were just doing a little bit of this back and forth, yeah. <laughs> Is that a goal for the two of you to work together, to share and do a call together? Like one of you does color, the other does play-by-play? -play? Yeah. I mean, I, I would love to. It's It's – easier in baseball because on you know as you know the old school radio you more or less most teams have two play-by-play -play guys that kind of go back and forth and support yeah. the other one football and basketball especially on television it's uh the color commentary role basically reserved for former players coaches experts yada yada what have you but yeah that's our best shot is uh major league uh, radio broadcast together yeah hopefully we would love to well I'd, I'd love to see that happen it's it's got to be like a, a ken griffey ken griffey jr moment right where you're Sharing a dugout with your dad in this case, a yeah. broadcast booth. Except I don't Very know if I cool. would. I don't know if I would let him ground me like senior did junior. Yeah, I, I wouldn't either if I were you. You've earned it. You <laughs> dress better than he does already. I think there's a lot of things you have to you have to bring to pops attention to say. Look, it's a new day, dude. He doesn't and dress then, too badly, but I'll take the compliment. Yeah, but he's doing the old school tie and blazer thing. You're yeah, rocking. Exactly. You know, like I said, it looks like Miami Vice today. <laughs> but, uh, hey, um, do you have a do you have a favorite uh, promotion? Because minor leagues famous for their crazy promotions, right? Yeah. Do you, have one, do you have one you've ever been involved with that you just went, this is the coolest thing we could have ever done? None, the one that popped into my mind, not even necessarily one that I was involved with. I was uh, used to be the broadcaster for the Pirates single A team in Florida for two years before I came out to Vegas. Right. And uh, we were in uh, Jupiter, Jupiter and Palm Beach. Uh, the Marlins and the Cardinals both share the, the complex. And it was Easter Sunday one year. And they dropped, uh, I had to have been hundreds of pounds of candy out of a helicopter that hovered about 20 feet over the field. And I just remember sitting in the broadcast booth. I had just gotten off the air. It was a Sunday, so they're running the bases, and they you know, take forever on the field. And just looking yeah. up, and, oh, here comes the helicopter. You just lower, 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 and then just a bunch of candy and kids going nuts. So that was one that I was uh, – they, they didn't tell me ahead of time either, so it was all a surprise to me. The I would say the craziest one that I've been involved in is when I was in Birmingham. I was with the Barons my first year out of college in 2017, 
and they, they did what they called a diamond dig. They had a jewelry company in town that was a, a big sponsor. And what they did was pregame. I, I don't know how he did it, but the groundskeeper buried. It was a diamond in a box under the infield. And so after the game, it was oh, wow. um, it was all women. They, they only allowed women to do it. And it was about 40 or 50 women literally jostling, shoving each other. They had these mini shovels, like little one-hand shovels, and they dug up the entire infield. It was the day before the All-Star break. It's the only reason they did it then. And uh, I just remember hearing about it, thinking, how is that going to look? And it, it was even weirder than I, than I expected. They had, they had enough time to put everything back together, and it was like a Black Friday out yeah, there on the infield. Yeah, I guess so. Uh, have... Um, See, they're crazy. I just love the I love the whole minor league. You know, you got to do what you got to do to get butts in the seats. It isn't, exactly. it isn't necessarily about, you know, your star player anymore. It's about how much fun can you create at the ballpark? Definitely. Just be glad though with that helicopter that it that it was candy and it wasn't turkeys cuz that I know. Oh man. It didn't go well for the WKRP in Cincinnati <laughs> guys. Hey, so what's uh, what's left here this season that uh, you would like to see the Aviators achieve? They've got I I would think season goals things you want to make sure you accomplish before the season's over anything you're working on well one of the differences between this year and, and in the handful of years past is they're going uh first half and second half champions as far as who makes the playoffs in the, in the postseason that's uh i believe the first time since 2006 that they've done that at the triple a level in varying levels of the minor leagues are they've done it differently but uh the the season basically resets at the end of june you play 75 games Whoever has the best record is the first half champion, and they're guaranteed a spot in the uh, in the playoffs. So kind of just if if they're not in the running for that, just staying consistent the whole year, and and just finding ways to win game in the dog days, as they say in August and, and September. Because you know even if you're way out of it in the first half, again the season's brand new in the second half. So I think just that consistency is really all that anybody can ask. There's a handful of guys that I'd like to see get pushed up to the major leagues, and in the case of Nick Allen, would love to see him get back up to the major leagues and stick with the bat uh, fully the couple of the guys jj blade is one that is a you know he's a really great guy really good player very tools he does a lot of things well i could absolutely see him getting a shot at some point during the year and then soderstrom and gellar on the right side of the infield the number one and two prospects in the system when they go up it'll be a bigger deal than mason miller was for sure as far as the media and the excitement within the organization where's tyler playing now is he playing third He's playing, he's catching and playing first base. He played first base last well, that's night. What, that's what and, I thought. And and he's, he's, but he's, he's been mainly catching, though, right? Yeah, and it's, it's interesting right now because Manny Pena is rehabbing with us. We've got four catchers on the roster right now. Uh, and actually, all four of them got into the game last night because Soderstrom was playing at first. Pena was catching. And Kyle McCann was serving as a designated hitter. And then Yoel Pozo, who just got activated during the last road trip, uh, came in to replace Pena, who took three at-bats and then was lifted. So uh, the, the catching room is is pretty crowded right now in Las Vegas. Is he? Yeah. Well, the thing I was thinking about is with Shea Langoliers being there already, where does that put Tyler in, in, if he's going to catch, which it seems like – I was expecting him to play a lot more first base, and that's why I asked. I wasn't paying attention. I didn't know if they were trying him at third now. Yeah, no. So they've been yeah exclusively catching and, and first base, and defensively at first base, he's been lights out. There really hasn't been a play where I you know you look at him and go, oh, that guy's not a first baseman. So I, I absolutely could see him sticking there. He's got the frame for it. He's a bigger, leaner guy, and that's kind of the the trend that a lot of first basemen are, are going with nowadays, as far as the, the physical makeup. Uh, with Langoliers, as as you mentioned really really awesome here last year and finally made the major league debut i think he's going to be the starting catcher for the next five plus years for oakland uh, backing him up right now is carlos perez who was with us uh, last year and uh, two years ago as well he's on a one-year deal so they're kind of trying to i would say not delay it a little bit but just try to figure out where soderstrom can fit in defensively more often because he's a guy too you know you call him up as a catcher he can man first base uh, you know, whenever needed. So I, th I think that they've, they've got a good option in, in Soderstrom at first base for sure. With Daniel Susak in Lansing this year in high A, first round pick uh, last year out of Arizona, who also catches. It's crazy. Yeah. The, the wealth and the riches in one area, and then there are others where you go, oh, I don't know. Rooker, a uh, bit of a surprise, yeah? Yeah, I he was a... I don't want to say a failed top prospect, but he was a former top prospect of Minnesota's and was a guy that was expected along with Nick Gordon and a couple of other big names that eventually did get up to Minnesota to make an impact and never really panned out. So it's good to see him in his second act uh, really turn things around with the bat, for sure. Well, he and Iglesias are like the new Bash brothers, right? Yeah, exactly. Go figure. Well, that's your dad calling. He's a little upset about what I said about the dressing thing. I'm going <laughs> to ignore the call. 
Um, Matt and Everett, thank you very much, man. And we're going to keep our eyes on what's going on out at the ballpark. I think if not for the, the really slow start, you, that first half thing would be a little bit more in reach. But uh, maybe you get them in the second half, right? Yeah, we'll see. I mean, still 50-plus games to go in the first half. But, yeah, come on out to the ballpark this week. We've got Thirsty Thursday tonight, $2 beers from 6 to 8 tonight with the 705 first pitch. Uh, 40th anniversary cap giveaway uh, tomorrow night and then Star Wars night on Saturday. That's usually one of our top couple of games attendance wise of the year. So they'll be wearing specialty Mandalorian jerseys. We'll get character appearances. So yeah, come on out, check it out at, at aviators LV on social media, aviators LV.com as well. What a great experience at the Las Vegas ballpark and always a great experience to talk to you, sir. Have a great rest of the day. Thank you, Wayne. There goes Matt. Go see him tonight. And by the way, by the time this airs, we'll be a few innings in. Don't let that stop you. I think you get a taco too tonight, don't you? Isn't it's it? A, taco every night? time they score seven runs or, or more, which is most most nights, you get the free taco from Taco Bell. So get your beers in you and start rooting for a taco to chase it with. Absolutely. We'll talk to you later. Absolutely. Happy to help. Thanks, buddy. What a shirt, huh? I keep waiting for cheap handgun and liquor night. That's the that's the promotion that I'm I'm hoping is uh, is just on the horizon. We can get right to that. We have a one-minute timeout. When we get back together, we talk movies and specifically the new George Foreman movie, Big George Foreman. We'll find out if it's worth your time with the one and only box officer, Patrick Stibbs, and that comes your way next. Hi there, this is Kirby Scofield of Scofield Realty here in Las Vegas. Real estate is always changing. Be it a buyer's market, a seller's market, at Scofield Realty, it's your market. Buying or selling, we have the team and the tools to work the market so it works for you. We are excited that we're on the Wayne Coy Show. Our results blessed us with the Zillow Flex Partnership roughly about two years ago due to our consistent conversion and customer service scores. With conversion, that means we can close customer service course you know you're going to get the best service possible we're always looking for agents led by mentorship resources and experience we are your guide find us kirby for you.com that's k-i-r-b-y the number four the letter u.com kirby for you.com or call 702-766-9538 again 702-766-9538 Three eight. Now back to the Wayne Coy Show. I'm gonna make him an offer again with you. Second one. This is a man. This is a snowman out there. My head is shot. Tell me about it, Stu. Mr. Demille, I'm ready for my close-up. Oh, he's always ready for his close-up. He's that guy, that movie guy. I'm the guy. We have him on tonight. Hello, Patrick Stibbs. How are you, Wayne Coy? Very good. The box officer. You've. Um, you got quite the following over all these years. When did you start doing this, Patrick? I started uh, doing box officer in 1986. Wow! So it's how many years is that? At least four. That's uh, years is how many? Years. <laughs> all right, so that's a lot. Of, you, and you know what? That's a lot of movies and a lot of crappy movies, but a lot of good movies. So and you know what? Of, Get, a lot of popcorn, Patrick. A lot of popcorn. Yeah, probably way too much. All right, so I started to say George Foreman. Uh, I didn't mean to step on you there, but George Foreman was a heck of a boxer. Yes. And uh, he's a heck of a salesman, as it yeah. works out. We didn't know that about him until much later in his life. Do exactly. They in, do they get into all of that? Is that going to get covered in the You movie? know, they, they get into uh, some of his life, uh, quite a bit of it. And by the way, the actual title of this movie, and I kid you not, is Big George Foreman, the miraculous story of the once and future heavyweight champion of the world. Oh, wait, That's the actual you. title. This isn't this what they did back in the 30s? <laughs> well, you know, they couldn't fit that on the marquee, so now it's just Big George Foreman. Period. So seriously, they started off with that unwieldy title and they narrowed it down. That that is the actual title still of, of the movie. That's the actual title. Now, this is based, of course, on the true story of you have to you have to uh, admit one of the greatest comebacks of all time, and uh, you talk about second chances. <laughs> George Foreman uh, could have written the book on that. So he was you know he had this impoverished childhood. He was a very angry kid, a very angry young man. Lots of anger in this guy's life. From Houston, right? Is that correct? Yes, Houston, correct. This area, okay. And you know becomes an Olympic gold medalist, world heavyweight champion. Well, then he has this near death experience that took him from the boxing ring to the pulpit. And he decided he wanted to give his life to God. 
But here's what happens. He decides to quit boxing and start preaching, but he realizes there's no money in that. <laughs> he's, and he's got to support his family. He's got like 11 kids or something. Well, there could, so be, he's like, well there, there he, could be money in that, Patrick, but probably well, yes. not at the beginning. Yeah. Okay. Exactly. Exactly. And so what happens is, is he says to his wife, he says, look, I'm, I'm always going to do my preaching and I'm going to stay true to the pulpit, but I got to get back in the ring because I got to make money. And by this time, I think he's in his 40s and people are just laughing at him going, there's no way you can do this. And, and so he's like, no, I'm going to become the heavyweight boxing champion ever. And uh, or at least the oldest, I should say. And so the film gets into a lot of that. Uh, uh, Chris Davis, who plays Ali, was also in Judas and the Black Messiah, if you ever saw that movie. He plays Foreman. Forrest Whitaker plays Foreman's trainer and mentor. Okay. And great actor. Great actor. And, you know, uh, I'm anxious to see this, the, the film, which I'll see this weekend. And um, it looks like a really, it looks like a really good film. So I, I'm anxious to see it. Okay. Can't review it yet. So you're just saying based on everything you know about it. That is correct. Yeah. Can't what review it because I haven't seen it yet. I right. actually, I had an invitation to go see it tonight, but I had to be on the air with my friend Wayne Coy. So I couldn't go tonight. I had my priorities, Wayne. I was going to say a man has to have his priorities. And apparently <laughs> we know where the old pecking order is, George. <laughs> uh, exactly. When, so when are you going to see it? Uh, I guess in the next week before we get back together again, you'll see it, right? I, I will see it. Yes. In the next couple of days, I will see it. Okay. Well then so uh, next yeah. Thursday, I can tell you what I, what I thought about it. And we'll talk about some other films coming out. You know, we're heading into the big summer season. Here so, uh, out. Coming up, we got the first big summer film is Guardians of the Galaxy Volume Three. Is that this it, next week? That it will open on May fourth, correct? Woo, may the fourth be with you. Yeah, so we'll be talking about that one and uh, whether or not there'll actually be a cassette soundtrack, which of course I'm waiting on. Heck yeah! <laughs> we want it's a cassette in the movie, so it should be a cassette. Well, exactly, exactly. And you know, the first two films, obviously, the soundtracks were hugely popular. And this one takes a little bit of a darker turn. You know, instead of a lot of pop hits, let me give you a hint. The soundtrack opens with Radiohead's Creep. So that's the first song that opens. Wow. And that kind of sets the tone, really, kind of for the soundtrack and for the movie. So they got out of the uh, the pop 70s and early 80s and moved on? Yeah, the they, they really kind of have. They, they got out of that. I think the only song that might still be lingering is Red Bones, Come and Get Your Love. Oh, it was, yes, of course. You know, yeah. uh, but other than that, they've, yeah, they've kind of moved on. They've gotten a little bit more uh, um, rock um, in the soundtrack. J the director, James Gunn, said that he really paid more attention to this Guardian soundtrack than he ever has before. Hmm. And because uh, that's the big thing, man. I mean, people love the soundtracks of these movies. I know you do. Uh, well, I know, yeah, exactly. Especially on colored virgin vinyl from Japan. <laughs> <laughs> uh, really, uh, by that's the way, I forgot to, You know, you didn't. Uh, I didn't give you the heads up, and I should have done it. But we had uh, we had a great guest, uh, Christina Wilson, who is uh, from Zia Records here in town. Oh yeah, and and, and she was on for for uh, National Record Store Day. Yes, and I know that looms large in your legend. So getting away from movies for just a bit. Did you go out and make any special record day purchases? Maybe? I, I did. As a matter of fact, I, I, I hit a couple record store day uh, stores here and found a couple uh, a couple good choice vinyl uh, selections. And I, I've, I've been a big fan of record store day forever and ever. Right. And, you know, everybody always, it's amazing how vinyl, and we, we've talked about this, vinyl's made this comeback. And everybody said, well, you know, why did, why did, people stopped buying vinyl in the 90s and i'm like they didn't have any choice the record label stopped making vinyl well there you go it's a little hard to buy it if they don't make it yeah vinyl would have always been popular except record labels as you know you've been in the business they wanted people to start buying cds so the vinyl went away and uh they they kind of forced another format on us which of course cds are fine but that's why vinyl now the kids today and and uh you know, even the older folks are realizing how cool vinyl really is. These kids and their wacky records. These wacky record kids, I'm telling you. <laughs> well, uh, I know it's late. I, I know you're weary, and I know your plans don't include me. 
So I'm going to let you go. Um, but listen, next time we get together, obviously we'll get a little Guardians of the Galaxy. You will have seen that, right? By the yes, time. I will. I'm going to be seeing that actually first of next week. So by next Thursday, we're going to be talking about Guardians, Guardians 3. All right. I'm excited about that. And then, of course, we'll find out what you thought of George Foreman. And then this is completely on a different track, but that poster behind you uh, is behind you for a reason. You wrote that movie that a lot of us have seen now called The Call. And I'd love yeah, to do a show. Correct. If you have the time, I would love to do a show about what the process is. And I know with you, it was a long haul to write a story that ends up becoming a screenplay. And then, the, you know, the screenplay gets uh, whatever the option, I guess is the word. And then you might not get the movie made and then you do. So I want to know all about all of that. And I know our listeners would love it. So if you have a, a chance to do that with us one of these days, that'd be great. Oh, absolutely. It, it, yeah, it was it was literally a 20-year process to bring it to the screen. Well, we and won't have that long on the radio, Patrick, so I have to condense <laughs> it down. <laughs> exactly. To a couple, of, I hear you. a couple of minutes anyway. All right. Well, uh, it is late in Omaha. Uh, not too late, though, for the NFL draft. We're going to catch you up on what's going on there. And the Golden Knights are already underway, and we'll let you know what that score is, too. But we had to take a break from all that sports to get to what's really important in life, popcorn and movie. <laughs> we had to clean the palate. Yes, we did. And boy, is it. All right. Thank you, Patrick. Thanks, Wayne. There you go. He's the box officer, Patrick Stibbs. And, uh, yeah, we'll look forward to next week's visit, of course. George Foreman, find out uh, if that is worth your trip to the theater. Hi there, this is Kirby Scofield of Scofield Realty here in Las Vegas. Real estate is always changing. Be it a buyer's market, a seller's market, at Scofield Realty, it's your market. Buying or selling, we have the team and the tools to work the market so it works for you. We are excited that we're on the Wayne Coy Show. Our results blessed us with the Zillow Flex Partnership roughly about two years ago due to our consistent conversion and customer service scores. With conversion, that means we can close and with our customer service scores, you know you're gonna get the best service possible. We're always looking for agents led by mentorship, resources, and experience. We are your guide, find us, kirbyforyou.com. That's K-I-R-B-Y, the number four, the letter U.com, kirbyforyou.com, or call 702-766-9538. Again, 702-766-9538. Do you need low-priced, quality health insurance for any reason right now? Then call MyHealthInsurance.com today. We specialize in helping American workers find affordable health insurance. You can save money on dental, vision, prescription drugs, too. Our message is simple. If you want affordable health insurance for you and your family, even if you have a medical condition, call right now. Is right now the best time for you to start looking for affordable health insurance? We have hundreds of plans to choose from. With one free phone call, you can learn about an affordable health insurance plan that fits your budget. Don't wait. It's a free call. Call now. 800-876-7061. 800-876-7061. That's 800-876-7061. MyHealthInsurance.com is owned and operated by IHC Specialty Benefits, a licensed insurance agency. We are not an insurance plan or provider. Not all plans are available in all areas. You may be contacted by an insurance agent. Hey, listen to this. Share Life Vacations has a special treat for you. It's a free three-day, two-night getaway to either magical Orlando or exciting Las Vegas. It's your choice. Absolutely no strings attached. Share Life will also include a second vacation to your choice of over 30 additional popular resort destinations. Now, we can't give everyone a fantastic prize package like this, so to make it fair, we're going to ask you a trivia question. You get it right. You'll win it all. Are you ready? Okay, here we go. This movie is about a British Secret Service agent who is frozen in time in the 1960s. Was that movie Austin Powers' International Man of Mystery? Press 1. Diamonds are forever. Press 2. 
Lethal Weapon, press 3. Got it? Well, then call 855-301-8586. 855-301-8586. That's 855-301-8586. Located only 4 miles from downtown Colorado Springs. At just 10 miles from Pikes Peak, Hyatt Place Colorado Springs Garden of the Gods offers spacious rooms featuring contemporary decor with stylish furnishings, including divided living and sleeping areas. The Hyatt Grand Bed, state-of-the-art media and work center, a 42-inch flat panel high-definition television that easily integrates with laptops and other devices, and complimentary breakfast Breakfast is included in your stay. Hyatt Place, Colorado Springs, Garden of the Gods at 503 West Garden of the Gods Road. Visit HyattPlace.com. Hi, I'm Sheldon, the owner of Solid Motor Cars. I've spent over 30 years in the retail car business. It is all about the vehicles, but more than that, it's about the people. And my team and I are proud to bring to you what we believe is the finest experience in buying a pre-owned car. With great credit, we can get super low interest rates. But if you've had some challenges, we're experts in that field, and we can get almost anybody approved. Come down to Solid Motor Cars and take a look at our vehicles. They come with a six-month, 6,000-mile warranty. So when you get a vehicle from Solid Motor Cars, you can feel confident that that vehicle is a quality, properly reconditioned vehicle that will serve you and your family for years to come. So for all your automotive needs, whether it's a new car, truck, or SUV, or if it's repairs, service, and maintenance, solid wheels, solid deals, solid people. Coming down to meet the crew, my name's Sheldon. I'm the owner here. I'd love to help you any way that I can. 3024 East Fremont Street, 702-820-1444. Do you use the expensive blue or yellow pills to charge your sex life? Are you thinking about it? What if we can promise you the same results for less than $3 a pill? If you're paying $20 a pill for the other pills, you're getting taken to the cleaners. Our pills deliver the exact same results for less than $3. You'll save more than $16 a pill for the same results. And right now, radio callers will get 44 blue or yellow pills for $120 with free discreet shipping. You can save more than $700 off pharmacy prices. Charge your sex life now and save a ton of money. Call now and get your 44 pills and save over $700 and qualify for free shipping. Stop overpaying and call right now. Paid for by Steel Man Pills. 800-431-9102. 800-431-9102. 800-431-9102. That's 800-431-9102. Now back to the Wayne Coy Show. Okay, it's draft day. With the seventh pick in the 2023 NFL Draft, the Las Vegas Raiders select Tyree Wilson, defensive end, Texas Tech. There is Tyree Wilson, the Red Raider, showing off the bling. Started his career at Texas A&M, moved to Texas Tech, born in Anchorage, Alaska, still has relatives there, and I'm sure they are celebrating tonight. Look at the wingspan for an edge rusher, <laughs> two inches longer than LeBron James. He can reach around dudes and get to the quarterback. Well, I guess we went from the Red Raiders to the Raiders then for, for Tyree, right? Do we like that pick? I mean, we need defense, correct? I know it's not sexy. I mean, it's a little sexy, but it's not sexy like quarterback sexy. But I think you know, we had we had assumed that all of the good quarterbacks would be uh, spoken for by the time it came to pick number seven, unless the Raiders were going to trade up. And I think their attitude is maybe play with Jimmy G and then see where you are after this next season. Because if they have another year like last year, then they're going to get a pretty high draft pick again. And I think next year's quarterback draft class uh, is even better. Bryce Young went very early. And I think that might have been the guy, maybe Anthony Richardson, that the Raiders would have thought about had they been there, but they weren't. They didn't make a mistake. I think they they didn't draft somebody purely on talent that might be not so great off the field. And there was always the danger of that, of course, back in uh, back in the day throughout Raider history. Al Davis really didn't care about the player's reputation. He just wanted to have him show up and play on the field. Nothing wrong with that. At least we thought, anyway, until they moved to Las Vegas and it seemed like one after another, the draft picks just imploded, right? So playing it safe here, give them the benefit of the doubt 
and I'll say uh, I'm going to grade that pick a B. I'm trying to get a hold of uh, the one member of my family who truly knows everything there is to know about the NFL draft. He could be a scout if he wanted to. That's my son, Ian. We've sent out the bat light. We'll see if he checks in. So that could be coming up. Could be. I'm, I'm going to say odds are 50-50 that we'll talk to Ian here in just a little bit. And the Golden Knights are underway. We'll let you know what's going on there. Six minutes and 40 seconds left to go in the first period. Already a goal in the net, and it belongs to Vegas. One to nothing leading in that game over Winnipeg. In times of economic uncertainty and chaos, your money means nothing. You may not even be able to get it from your bank or ATM. And the money you do have in the stock market will go down and down. What you can bank on is gold and silver. Gold and silver have been a reliable and trusted form of currency for thousands of years. Gold and silver have never been worth zero, and typically gold holds its value during economic turmoil. Call the gold hotline now and learn how to protect your money and your assets with gold and silver. And learn how to set up a new IRA or roll over your current one into a gold-backed IRA. Protect your money from the next market crash with gold and silver. Call now for your free gold guide. 800-557-7921. 800-557-7921. 800-557-7921. That's 800-557-7921. My name is Michael Stefanski, and I am the owner and founder of Sin City Custom Suits. Custom clothing concierge. I help gentlemen get into clothes that fit them like they're supposed to, that they pick out themselves and we craft together. 600 different suit fabrics to pick from, about 40 measurements to make sure the suit's gonna fit you right. Then we decide, do you want two buttons on the front, three buttons on the front, how many on the sleeve you want, like a custom photo lining for the inside of your jacket, any number of different things that you can think of. This is all about what do you want? And, and when you ask guys, what do you want? They don't know because they've never given been given the option before. Because I help men look as absolute best as they can. It's transforming people's lives. If you've never had a suit that fits you right, you have no idea how much confidence it gives you. That's the important part. 702-767-2478. Instagram at Custom Suit Guy. SinCityCustomSuits.com. At the Bagel Cafe, the recipe is simple. Good food and generous portions. Family owned and operated since 1996, the Bagel Cafe is a unique restaurant where you can get anything your appetite desires. From a bagel and a schmear to piled high corned beef on homemade rye, fresh fruit platters and salads, or creamy New York cheesecake. Check them out at thebagelcafelv.com. The Bagel Cafe, where there's something delicious for everyone. Do you love watching television? If you're on a fixed budget, you need to make this free call right now to Dish and find out how you can get a fixed monthly price to watch all the television you want for three full years. In addition to a three-year price guarantee, you can also get free monthly movie rentals. They give you one free movie rental every month. That's a $165 value yours free. Plus, get free in-home tech visits, no-cost equipment replacements, a free voice remote, and you can watch commercial free tv even access all your favorite apps to stream like netflix amazon prime youtube and more now is the perfect time to call dish take advantage of the three-year price guarantee save yourself some money and all your equipment is free call right now 800-586-4206 800-586-4206 800-586-4206 that's 800-586-4206 paid for by NPS. Are you worried about your taxes? Okay, so I'm talking to those of you out there that have not filed in a few years with the IRS or state. It's time to get worried, and here's why. The IRS is getting back from their own COVID lockdown, and they're hiring more enforcers, and they're going to come after people that owe taxes. So if you're a 1099 worker, and maybe you just plain forgot to file your taxes, you need to call the professionals right now at the tax helpline. They are experts at knowing the tax regulations 
regulations, and their goal is to help you pay as little as possible. Call right now and get a 100% free tax evaluation. Remember, before the IRS knocks on your door, knock on our door. If you owe $10,000 or more in back taxes, make this free call right now. Call taxes 321 now at 800-203-3517. 800-203-3517. That's 800-203-3517. KSHP, North Las Vegas, 107.1 FM, 1400 AM, K296HP, North Las Vegas, and online at KSHP.com. Live from Las Vegas, this is the Wayne Coy Show. It can't get more fun than this hour already, right? I mean, we just, we, we had a great conversation with uh, Matt Neverett from uh, the... Las Vegas Aviators talking baseball. That's fun. Uh, We dove into that Las Vegas Raiders pick in the draft, which we're going to revisit here in just a little bit with an expert. And, of course, the box officer, Patrick Stibbs, would not be a Thursday night without him in the new movie, George Foreman. He hasn't seen it yet, but uh, he's planning on seeing it here this week. I love that. He said he was going to see it tonight, but he chose instead to do our show, which is great. All right, so we're going to New Jersey where there's a new rule that if you argue with a Little League umpire, well, then you need to umpire three games yourself before they're going to allow you to come back as a spectator, okay? I've been around those parents. I've almost been one of those parents. It's no fun. Uh, Delford Township Little League President Don Buzuffi and parent Caitlin Tokley are here to talk about this new rule. If you're gonna going to lose it, you're going to use it. They're coming here. They're being abused. They don't need that, so they're walking away. You're not allowed to come onto our complex until you complete three umpire assignments. Once you do that, then we'll let you come back. If the parents are going to be sitting there yelling the whole entire game, they might as well use that energy like out on the field. That's what I'm saying. Okay, I've been there. I've, I almost got into a fist fight actually once at my kids' little league game, and I wasn't trying to be that guy. It's just that guy kind of pushed a few buttons and pretty soon there were a lot of that guys. I wasn't, I wasn't the only one. And what I didn't know, and they, they told me later, and I'm glad I didn't know ahead of time is they said, uh, you know, he was uh, out on parole, right? He went to prison for murdering a guy. I'm like, are you kidding me? So yeah, that was a long time ago in Alabama. Statute of limitations probably hasn't expired. So we'll leave that alone and move on. A Stanford student has uh, coded. It's, it's that thing again. It's GPT. We're talking about AI. Uh, Yeah, the artificial intelligence that can listen to a conversation that you're having, okay, and then tell you, where was this when I was a teenager? Listen, Listen to the conversation and then tell you exactly what to say next by showing the words to you on your little monocle. The first question she's going to ask is, um, why are you wearing a monocle? I don't know anybody who wears a monocle. Anyway, uh, two separate examples of developer Brian Chang using what he's calling R-I-Z-Z-G-P-T, Riz GPT. First conversation, flirting with a coworker. The second one is a mock job interview. Check it out. Hey, Bridget, how's your trip to Argentina? I'd love to hear about it. Oh, it was so fun. I had a blast. We explored around the city and went to museums and... Did a lot of fun stuff. That sounds amazing. Did you get to try any new foods while you were there? Actually, we didn't really eat well. Hey, Varun. I hear you're looking for a job to teach React Native. Thank you for your interest. I've been studying React Native for the past few months, and I'm confident that I have the skills and knowledge access necessary for the job. Yeah, you do not sound like you are reading at all. See, that's my only problem with the whole AI thing. I got sent to me today, and if we'll have time, I'll play it for you in the next hour, but... Somebody took the car song, uh, Just What I Needed, you know, Just What I Needed. And they took uh, the artificial intelligence, took Paul McCartney's singing voice. So it's McCartney singing the cars, right? And every now and again, yes, I'll admit, it sounds a little bit like Paul McCartney. Most of the time, it sounds like really bad artificial intelligence. Now, the thing is, I know you're thinking, well, you know, hang on. It's just getting out there. So will it get better? The odds are that it probably will. So I'm probably speaking a little bit out of turn. Maybe, just maybe, the technology will catch up and it'll be a lot better. And it probably will be. 
a couple in Florida celebrating 80 years of marriage and over eight decades of being a couple. 80 years of marriage. How do you do it? What are the secrets? We've got to find out with Vic and Marge Gerard and their kids all talking about their long relationship. I asked for a phone number, and I remember a number. We play golf together, we dance together, we play cards together. I'm a marriage counselor, and they have been my inspiration <laughs> for believing in marriage. They could have lived a more extravagant life if they chose to, but they didn't. What was important to them was their kids, their family, each other, golf and dancing. How about that, golf and dancing? 80 years, can you believe that? That. That is something to applaud. So congratulations to Vic and Marge. Now, Vic does sound an awful lot like uh, Don Corleone in The Godfather. So, I mean, maybe that had something to do with the longevity of their marriage. I, I don't know. Maybe, did he ever look at Marge and go, I want to tell you something, Marge. You look at me like that again and you serve broccoli one more time and it's over hi there this is kirby scope scope for realty here in las vegas real estate is always changing be it a buyer's market a seller's market at scope for realty it's your market buying or selling we have the team and the tools to work the market so it works for you we are excited that we're on the wayne coy show our results blessed us with the zillow flex partnership roughly about two years ago due to our consistent conversion and customer service scores with conversion that means we can close and with our customer service scores you know you're going to get the best service possible we're always looking for agents led by mentorship resources and experience we are your guide find us kirby for you.com that's k-i-r-b-y the number four the letter u.com kirby for you.com or call 702-766-9538. Again, 702-766-9538. Pine Hollow Winery is the first and only boutique winery in the Las Vegas city limits that features its own handcrafted wines. Located on the west side just minutes from the strip at 7018 West Charleston, Pine Hollow Wines are available for tasting by the glass, bottle, or for carryout lovers pick up a bottle of the warm fuzzy which is a sweet chardonnay style wine made with peach and apricots visit pinehollowwinery.com for their events wine menu and hours that's pinehollowwinery.com do you love watching television if you're on a fixed budget you need to make this free call right now to dish and find out how you can get a fixed monthly price to watch all the television you want for three full years in addition to a three-year price guarantee you can also get free monthly movie rentals they give you one free movie rental every month that's a 165 dollars value yours free plus get free in-home tech visits no cost equipment replacements a free voice remote and you can watch commercial free tv even access all your favorite apps to stream like netflix amazon prime youtube and more now is the perfect time to call dish take advantage of the three-year price guarantee save yourself some money and all your equipment is free call right now 800 800-586-4206. 800-586-4206. 800-586-4206. 800-586-4206. That's 800-586-4206. As a three-time international award-winning restaurant, Joe's New York Pizza uses only the freshest and best available ingredients. From giant slices of hand-tossed pie to calzones, strombolis, fingers, and wings, Joe's serves all your favorites. Stop in for a slice at one of their two Las Vegas locations at Paradise and Harmon or South Las Vegas Boulevard, or you can check out their menu at Joe's New York Pizza LV.com. Hey, listen to this. Share Life Vacations has a special treat for you. It's a free three day, two night getaway to either magical Orlando or exciting Las Vegas. It's your choice. Absolutely no strings attached. Share Life will also include a second vacation to your choice of over 30 additional popular resort destinations. Now, we can't give everyone a fantastic prize package like this, so to make it fair, we're going to ask you a trivia question. You get it right, you'll win it all. Are you ready? Okay, here we go. This movie is about a British Secret Service agent who is frozen in time in the 1960s. Was that movie Austin Powers' International Man of Mystery? Press one. Diamonds are forever. Press two. Lethal weapon. Press three. Got it? Well, then call 855-301-8586. 
855-301-8586. That's 855-301-8586. In times of economic uncertainty and chaos, your money means nothing. You may not even be able to get it from your bank or ATM. And the money you do have in the stock market will go down and down. What you can bank on is gold and silver. Gold and silver have been a reliable and trusted form of currency for thousands of years. Gold and silver have never been worth zero, and typically gold holds its value during economic turmoil. Call the gold hotline now and learn how to protect your money and your assets with gold and silver. And learn how to set up a new IRA or roll over your current one into a gold-backed IRA. Protect your money from the next market crash with gold and silver. Call now for your free gold guide. 800-557-7921. 800-557-7921. 800-557-7921. That's 800-557-7921. Now back to the Wayne Coy Show. Hey, it is uh, good to have you back in uh, in your place. Or you're, I know what you've been doing. Watching the draft, listening to the show. You're doing both, right? You better be. You better be two-timing tonight. That's all I got to say. Hey, we have good news. We're going to share that news coming up in just a couple minutes. Hang on. KSHP North Las Vegas at KSHP.com. You're listening to the Sports Byline USA Broadcast Network. USA News. I'm Ryan Daniels. The Mississippi River is reaching historic levels in northeast Iowa. In McGregor, the Mississippi is already at the third highest level. In Dubuque, the river is also expected to crest at its third highest all-time level. NBC News' Maggie Vesma in Iowa reports there's good news for some. Near the headwaters of the Mississippi, where basically near record snowpack is melting rapidly, and that's what's causing all of this flooding. Up north, they are starting to see some waters recede in northern Minnesota. Meanwhile, an extremely dangerous tornado is hitting parts of Florida as the state's battered with harsh weather. A severe weather threat was issued across most of Florida and southern Georgia Thursday. Winds up to 75 miles per hour were tearing up several homes in one area. Two Army Apache helicopters have crashed following a training flight in Alaska. The helicopters were returned to the 25th Aviation Regiment at Fort Wainwright. It is currently unknown how many people were on board or what caused the crash. Former President Trump is campaigning in the key early voting state, of New Hampshire. During his rally speech in Manchester, Trump railed against President Biden. Next year, we're going to make history together when we win New Hampshire primary for the third straight time. He said the 2024 presidential election will be a choice between strength and weakness. I'm Dave Collins. Meanwhile, on Thursday, President Biden made headlines when he forgot his recent foreign visit to Ireland. A reporter asked what was the last foreign country he visited? And Biden couldn't quite come up with the answer himself. And FBI Director Christopher Wray is warning that the threat of cyber attacks from China is unparalleled. And that's a quote. He said China has the largest hacking program in the world and has stolen more U.S. data than all other nations combined. This is USA News. Oh, 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 O'Reilly. When you shop O'Reilly Auto Parts, you'll get the parts you need when you need them. Order online at O'ReillyAuto.com and choose same-day curbside, same-day pickup, or same-day delivery powered by DoorDash. Now available at participating stores near you. Trust the professional parts people to get you the parts you need today. Visit O'ReillyAuto.com. Oh, 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 O'Reilly. Auto Parts. <laughs> Progressive covers pets in our auto policy at no extra charge. Now, let's see what your dog has to say. As a dog, I think Progressive's auto pet policy is... Oh, what is that? That's just my tail. (laughs) Weird. Anyway, Progressive protects... There it is again. See? This is why I need protection. I'm so distracted. Nope, that is still my tail. Progressive auto insurance covers pets for up to $1,000 in a car accident at no extra charge. And we think your dog would say that's great, too. Progressive Casualty Insurance Company and Affiliates. Coverage for cats and dogs included with the purchase of collision coverage and subject to policy terms. In-world premium. CBD offers full and broad spectrum CBD oil, extracts, and capsules, which are designed to help you feel your best. Their products are sourced from the best organic hemp and natural ingredients on the market and are tested for quality, purity, and potency. 
They have a full range of items from health and wellness to beauty to pets. Call 725-205-9223. Visit online at zinworld.com or stop by their location at 9895 South Maryland Parkway and Silverado Ranch Parkway. Mention KSHP for 10% off in-store or use code KSHP online for 15% off. Welcome to Hash House of Go-Go, where we've been serving farm food and crafted cocktails for over two decades. Visit us for the full Hash House experience at any of our five Las Vegas locations. Hash House of Go-Go is where old school meets new and gets twisted. We bring people together over good food and fun. Come in for breakfast, lunch, or dinner, and come hungry because our portions are huge. Visit us online to see our entire menu at hashhouseofgogo.com. Hash House of Go-Go. It's a Midwest thing, and there's nothing else like it. At AR Heat Heating and air conditioning, our main goal is to provide high quality service without breaking the bank. From maintaining your HVAC units to fixing them when they are down, they are there for you. AR Heating and Air Conditioning offer reasonable prices, reliability, and professional service at a great value. For more information, go to fixmyac.net or call 702 646 4000. Beat the heat and call AR Heating and Air Conditioning today. Is your dog suffering from a sensitive stomach? Hi, it's Kelly the Cookie Lady from Mooch's Munchies. Our dogs had super sensitive tummies, and I needed to find a low-fat treat that wouldn't give them gas or other issues. Most of the treats on the market were loaded with fillers, chemicals, and chicken fat. Many of them weren't even food. Well, I knew I could do better, so I developed Mooch's Munchies, and I'm happy to be able to share them with you. Stop by our store or our website, moochesmunchies.com, and find out why we say that Mooch's Munchies are totally possum. Buckle up. Let's go for a ride. It's the Wayne Coy Show. Yeah, it is. You know, all the uh, stuff that happened yesterday happened for a reason. And I, I kind of believe that in life, right? Stuff happens for a reason. And that's exactly what happened. Stuff happened for a reason. And the good news is it's uh, it's been taken care of today. So I think we have we have clear space to fly in. And boy, are we going to introduce you to somebody who you may know already. Uh, been a famous guy for a while. He does something that's called uh, beat poetry. It's called slamming. It's called making babies. If you listen to him, he is like the uh, the Barry White of this generation. OK, his name is Corey, the poet. He'll be in studio. But I want to give you a taste of what what Corey is all about. Give a good listen to this and see what you think. I think uh, the man knows what he's doing. So let's let's have a listen to see what this sounds like. Here we go. I just have to tell you how he feels. is fine. See, I know that if your heart is mine, then your body will follow. So I'm going to love you more today as if there's no more tomorrow. See, honey, I must admit that after falling in love with you, it's like my previous relationships just didn't exist. So you're my one and only, no front. I'll swim through a shark-infested ocean just for the notion that you might want something. I love to hear you say yes, yes. yes. When I massage and sex away your stress, stress. Yes. You tell me, baby, I'm the best, best thing that you, you ever had. That you ever had. I love you, baby. It's all for oh, you. you. Everything oh, that I do, do, I do it. I do it. I do it for you. It's for you. I do it for you. I do it for you. When 
our worlds collide. I pray that you can stay the night. So whatever is wrong in your life, I promise I'll make it right. I'll do it for you. See, I'll protect you from whatever I can. Clark Kent's the hint, but I'm your Superman. See, I'll work and provide for you. Respect and ride for you. Live and die for you. And stand by your side for you. So let me hold you, spoil you, and be loyal. Sequester your special mood. Make love, love until you can't move. I'd love to hear you say yes, yes. yes. And sex away your stress, stress. Yes. Baby, I'm the best, best thing that you, you ever had. Can't you ever I love you, baby. Love you, baby. It's all for oh, you. you. Everything you that I do, do, I do it. I do it. I do it for you. Just call my name. It's Corey, baby, and I do it. I do it. I do it for you. Everything that I do. I do it for you. You know that I do it for you. Dude. You do do it for us, don't you? <laughs> I try. Yeah. Uh, I said, and I don't know if you heard this on your way over, but uh, by the way, Corey, the poet, ladies and gentlemen. Yes. Nice, thank you. Nice thank to have you. you in the room. Hey, um, you you are uh, deserving of the reputation of being a, a guy who helps people make babies. Yes? Uh, yeah. You can say something like that. Right. Yeah. So, you know, when I was coming up, it was Barry White and Marvin Gaye. Right. And you're sort of taking that mantle and you're running with it now. I'm, hey, give me the football. Get out of my way. Okay. Here I come. All right. So, Corey, the poet. If you wouldn't mind a little background, like where are you from? Uh, originally from L.A., but raised and born and bred in the Bay Area, and I moved here two years ago. Okay. Yeah, so I've been doing poetry like this uh, for eleven years professionally in the Bay Area. Uh, in the Bay, all over. I, I travel. I, matter of fact, did a. Uh, I'm getting ready to go do a show in June with uh, Keith Sweat and Stephanie Mills. Okay. So, uh, yeah, I travel all over and do this. Uh, Can I tell you my uh, my Keith Sweat story real quick? Yeah, absolutely. I was working in uh, Mobile, Alabama, mm -hmm. okay, and Keith Sweat had a new song out, and we were playing it, right. and I was a program director and the morning guy, right? The owner of the station this is a mom and pop sh shop, right? Right. His name is Bernie. Bernie came flying into the room, and he goes, I think I know that voice. That's <laughs> kind of how he talked. And I said, yeah, you know this voice? Who is this, Bernie? He goes, it's that son of a bitch, Keith Sweat. <laughs> and I said, wait, whoa, whoa, why you got the hatred for Keith Sweat? And he goes, he had that song, I Want Her Out, and our ratings went down. <laughs> and I said, well, don't worry, this is a good one. It's a good one. So I made him leave. Uh, so you're going to go tour with Keith? Not just uh, it's one uh, show out there in Denver. I got a, okay. They had a little concert going on, so I'll be out there actually emceeing and performing. Okay. Yeah. Now, where in the Bay? In the Bay, uh, San Francisco, Oakland, Pittsburgh, mainly Pittsburgh, California. Okay. Yeah, famous for, uh, used to be famous for being a BART station, you know? I, yeah. A stop. Last stop, is it last, last stop? stop? Yeah, it was okay, the last stop. that's what I thought. Still and, is the last stop. And last you have stop. that great theater there. I forget what it's called. Yeah, California Theater. Okay. Yeah. And a football team that takes nobody's mess, which is good. Pittsburgh. High. Yeah, they're, they're good. Yeah. 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 I mean, they're not, uh, they're not state champion good. Right. But they're good. They're good. They year after good. year after year. Yeah, right? year after year. And eventually they get there. Uh -huh. you know, every once in a while they get sure. there. Yeah. So uh, compare the two places. Well, I guess all three. You grew up in L.A.? Uh, born in Los Angeles, first okay. 14, 15 years, then raised in the Bay. After then you went that. to East Bay when you were like 14? Yeah, okay. yeah absolutely. What city there? Was Pittsburgh. Pittsburgh, okay. Yeah. yeah, I went to Pittsburgh High. Oh, okay. Yeah, no, no there. wonder you're so proud of that yeah. football team. You're <laughs> yeah. Okay. So, and I'm from Oakland, so I went to Frick Junior High yeah. and would have gone to Castlemont, but ended up moving to San Leandro. I think my wife went to Frick Junior High. Oh, did she? Yeah. Cinnamon Rolls. Best yeah. best ever. Yeah, I think she yep. went there. She's originally from Oakland, San Francisco okay. area. She's from around in the 60s or 70s and somewhere in there? Uh, yeah. I, I was at 74 from MacArthur. Uh, you mean the uh, where she lives? Streets, yeah. Fleming Avenue. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. she went to Frick, sure. Yeah. She probably didn't go to Castlemont, though. No, she went to Fremont. That's what I was thinking. Okay. All yeah, right. she went to Fremont High. All right. Her and Too Short. 
Yeah, that's right. Too short went there. Same too time. Yeah, same time. See, I never thought that all I would have to do is uh, move to Las Vegas uh-huh. to be able to reconnect with the people. I'm a little homesick right now. I got to tell you. Hey, you know, we've been here for two years. We go back every once in a while. So that's where I was headed. What's the the difference, Corey, between uh, California lifestyle and Vegas? Uh, well, right off the back is the weather, you know, yeah. is the, the heat is just incredible out here. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's a different type of heat out here, man. The first time you got like 115, you're like, what? Uh, man, we moved out here, uh, May 21st, May 22nd. I was ready to go back because yeah. it was so hot when we was moving, but yep. you know, and it, it's a, out here is a, it really is the entertainment capital of the world. You know, it's so much entertainment out here. It's amazing. And that's from the top shows all the way down to you can catch somebody for free at a bar. Right. And it's and, it's and they're good. Good. Yeah. yeah. And the thing about the Bay Area, you know, their talent out there is amazing. The Bay Area have so much, so much talent. It's incredible how much they have. Not as many Just venues. Just not many though. outlets. Yeah, exactly. That's right. I, I think there's less places to go see things. Exactly. It's Just not as many outlets. You have a few, you know, uh, bars you can go to or whatever, but like big venues, Yoshi's is a staple out there. Yep. You know, when you get to Yoshi's after Yoshi's, what, you know, you know, my classmate, uh, I'm, I'm going to be a name dropper here, mm-hmm. but uh, Dwayne Wiggins and I were in school together yeah. at E. Morris Cox in Oakland. Mm-hmm. Um, we did the uh, talent show for, for Christmas. Right. And uh, I really wanted to be Michael right. Jackson because uh-huh. we were, we were lip syncing to Frosty the Snowman. Right? Yeah. And uh, they made me be Marlon, okay? <laughs> Which, you know, that's relegated to the bench. That's the way I looked at it back then. Although he was the best dancer, I think, yep. of them all. Hey, he, you know what? You see some of the uh, old footage. Marlon wanted to be a friend so bad. He t- he had his moments where he just took over, and they looking at him like, okay, that's not in the routine, but yeah. okay. Yeah, because he would do it. That's yeah. what I mean. So now looking back, I don't mind as much, but when I was uh, – you know, in the fourth and fifth grade, Miss Nakagawa's class, by the way. Yeah. And so anyway, Dwayne Wiggins, Tony, Tony, Tony. Yeah. Who uh, does perform at Yoshi's. Mm-hmm. And um, every, every Christmas. Right. That's what I was going to say. It's kind of almost built like a tradition, holiday yeah. tradition there. Now. Yeah. No, I know Dwayne very well. We're friends. And we have his number in my phone. Right, tell him to give me that money. We actually did a sh- he did. I did a show in San Leandro at the Bow Theater. Okay. You know, and it seats about 800. Yeah. So I was like. Uh, Dwayne, you know, I'm doing this show, bro. I'll have you a special invited guest, you know, just come by and do something. Yeah. And he said, you know what? I'll do you one better. I'll give you my song, the uh, the instrumental to my song, whatever you want. And you write a you piece to thing. it yeah. and I'll sing the hook. And that's what we did on live on the stage. Yeah. Do you have a recording of that? Absolutely. Oh, I got to hear that. Absolutely. Yeah. 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 Those guys were old souls. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like they... They're my age, so I think Dwayne probably graduated. In fact, I know he did, 79, right? <laughs> um, but they're more like 15, 20 years prior to that. Yeah. You yeah, know? yeah. no. So 79, I was 10. Okay. You didn't have to rub it in. Yeah, I'm just saying. Yeah, I, I know what you're saying, <laughs> old man. <laughs> That's what you're saying. Yeah, but no, Dwayne was down to earth, man. The very first time I met Dwayne, he didn't know me from Adam, but he was still – cool you know he is down to earth type yeah. of guy he is a community person you know he's a people person for sure now i never met Raphael. i don't uh don't know him at all yeah no i, I met him in passing one time but mm-hmm. yeah not he was wiggins at one point yeah and he yeah, changed yeah. his name in the know? beginning yeah got himself a bean pie and a new last name yeah a couple, couple of few million dollars and you can do what you yeah, want to do that'll do it yeah, yeah. absolutely Corey the poet is our guest here on uh, on the show and um i want to know how the whole poetry thing started for you because that's not something that you just get exposed to like in school. Well, and I always thought it was more of an East coast thing, Corey. Well, you know, well, in the Bay area, it was pretty big actually, but I got started, uh, honestly writing poetry, uh, on a consistent basis in college. Okay. You know, I went to, uh, the college of Notre Dame out there in the peninsula okay. in the Bay area. And my English teacher at the time, RIP, uh, said to the class, we were out in the choir, and he was like, you know, if anybody can go up there and write a poem and then just recite it, we'll give you extra credit. Well, I'll always need an extra credit. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so, you don't ask me twice. <laughs> so I went up there and I did it, you know, <laughs> and I was a theater major, major at the time. So, you know, you do something and you get that instant response, the bug hits. Yeah. So I started writing poems, like four or five poems a day. You just know. because he said, hey, just if somebody's willing to do this, yeah. 
Here's the poem. You just go read it. Exactly. And wow. I just started writing four or five poems a day. Now, once I graduated from college, I got out in 99. Uh, I stepped away from it for a while because, you know, life happens. So it does. Uh, when I went to work, got a regular job like most folks. And every, everything I did was like something always in me saying, this is not what you're supposed to be doing. Mm-hmm. You know, this is not what you're supposed to be doing. Your gifting. You know, right. right. So, you know, but, you know, when you got uh, responsibilities, you you block that out and you just keep doing what you're doing. Sure. But a friend of mine one time, years later, took me to an open mic in Oakland at the uh, Air Lounge. It was called the Air Lounge. And she said, I know you write poetry, so I didn't want to bring you here. So we went there and she said, oh, by the way, I signed you up. It's an open mic. Oh, no. I had absolutely nothing. Yeah. You know, I had nothing memorized. and But I'm a theater major. Okay, well, I'm not running from it. We don't make so. We, what did you do? You so I, they call me up there freestyle. Second, not even first, not not even later, but second. Okay. So I went up there and I literally had a rap in my head that I wrote uh, years ago. Okay, and I just spoke it. I monologued it. Yeah, you know. And I the, said a hip hop, a hibbit, a to the hibbity hop. Not that kind of rap. Oh, okay. <laughs> but you know, they they enjoyed it, and so. Like again, again, theater major. When somebody, yeah, 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 yeah. you can improvise if that, you have to. That bug hit, yeah. And from right in that moment on, I started uh, rewriting again. I started writing again. Okay. And then when uh, maybe uh, a year later, I met, which is, she is now my current wife, but I met her, and she was like, "Your stuff is, stuff is so different. You just need to add music and singing to it." Right. So you're yeah. getting to my next question is yeah. that, how did that happen? That's exactly how it happened. It was okay. her suggesting. Yeah. Wow. Uh, she said, you need to add singing and music to it and make them all just intertwined together to where it's not separate. Right. You know, there's no so like when you hear a collaboration of a, say, a singer and a rapper, you hear the singer sing and then the rapper raps. Right. And then the singer sing. Where as for me, you know, I do the talking, but in between you hear some, the singers. There's interplay with there's both interplay, of you. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. So that's how, that's how that started. It's been working well for 11 years. Okay. Yeah. And we want to talk about what you're doing. Uh, is it once a month on Sunday? It's the last Sunday of, uh, yeah, the next three months so okay. far. And uh, and the venue is Orleans? No, the venue is uh, the Duomo oh, okay. inside of the Rio. Right. Yeah. I know exactly where that is. Yeah, that's the venue. And were you at the Orleans for something? No, 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 okay. no, no. We, were, I was, you know, a friend of my friend of ours, Tommy. Yeah. We were looking at the uh, Orleans, okay. you know, cause as a place to perform, as a place, yeah, to put do some stuff, yeah. e- exactly. Because we was going to do a business venture with Tommy. Mm-hmm. We was actually going to open up a place out here. Okay, you know, uh, so Tommy T, Bay Area legend, right. uh, comedy guy. Right, right, and uh, still, and we're still thinking about it, but. Uh, he took us to the Orleans to see a couple of rooms. Oh, yeah. Okay. yeah. That's where that came from. Right. Right. See, for some reason, I thought that's where you were. So you're at the Rio. Yeah. Okay. At the Duomo room inside of the Rio. And uh, last Sunday of every month, 2 p.m. show. Yeah. It's from 2 p.m. to 3.15. All I saw in the clip. In and out. I don't mean to embarrass you, okay? But I told Mark, I said, this is a guy who I I believe could open up his own lingerie store probably by the end of the night. You get so much attention. And I watched in this clip I saw, and I'm not, I'm not trying to embarrass you, okay? right. oh, but no. it was, it was a row of women. Okay. Uh-huh. And as you moved, their necks moved. It right. was like this. It was like in unison. They were going where Corey was going. Didn't yeah. take their eyes off. Of you. Yeah. Well, you know, that's my job. I guess so. Right. Yeah. I mean, at what point did you say, okay, you know what? I'm, I'm that guy. I'm the romance guy. My wife told me. She did? Yeah. No, this whole concept was her idea. She said, share what I'm getting for free and make some money on that. She literally literally told me this is going to be your career. Okay. She said, because it's so different and you're doing what needs to be done out there. You know, uh, people need to hear more about love and romance without all of the calling women out of their names or disrespecting yes. women, you know, or being so too vulgar, right. You know, about you don't do that though. You, you know, elevate, right. Right. That's what I get from the music. Elevate, is inspire elevate. and uh, keep it sexy and smooth and sensual. And then your queen says, Oh boy. Yeah. Well, I said, I told Mark here. Cause he said, he said, well, romance is, is, is uh, he didn't say it was dead. I think he said romance has been dying. Yeah. And, and we need this to kind of bring that back. Yeah. No, it really has been uh, slowly, you know, just uh, getting worse and worse. So I was like, you know, honey, you're right. 
we you know we need to let these women out here know that there's still romance in the world. There's yeah. still good men out there in the world yeah, that talk like this and, you know, give you hope and inspiration and then turn around and actually do it for you. Mm-hmm. Yeah. We're going to take a break. When we come back, I wanted to share. Uh, we've got a couple of your songs here, but one in particular that struck me. And I'm sure there's a story. There's always a story. So if you don't mind. It's always a uh, story. You, yeah, but you'll, you don't mind sharing that story. I <laughs> Absolutely. Hope. Okay, we'll do that next. You're listening to The Wayne Coy Show. Hi there. This is Kirby Scofield with Scofo Realty here in Las Vegas. Real estate is always changing. Be it a buyer's market, a seller's market. At Scofield Realty, it's your market. Buying or selling, we have the team and the tools to work the market so it works for you. We are excited that we're on the Wayne Coy Show. Our results blessed us with the Zillow Flex Partnership roughly about two years ago due to our consistent conversion and customer service scores. With conversion, that means we can close. And with our customer service scores, you know you're going to get the best service possible. We're always looking for agents led by mentorship, resources, and experience. We are your guide. Find us. kirby for youcom that's K I R B Y, the number four, the letter U dot com. Kirby for you dot com or call 702 766 9538. Again, 702 766 9538. Hey, listen to this. Share Life Vacations has a special treat for you. It's a free three-day, two-night getaway to either magical Orlando or exciting Las Vegas. It's your choice. Absolutely no strings attached. Share Life will also include a second vacation to your choice of over 30 additional popular resort destinations. Now, we can't give everyone a fantastic prize package like this, so to make it fair, we're going to ask you a trivia question. You get it right. You'll win it all. Are you ready? Okay, here we go. This movie is about a British Secret Service agent who is frozen in time in the 1960s. Was that movie Austin Powers' International Man of Mystery? Press 1. Diamonds are forever. Press 2. Lethal Weapon. Press 3. Got it? Well, then call 855-301-8586. 855-301-8586. That's 855-301-8586. My name is Michael Stefanski, and I am the owner and founder of Sin City Custom Suits. Custom clothing concierge. I help gentlemen get into clothes that fit them like they're supposed to, that they pick out themselves, and we craft together. 600 different suit fabrics to pick from, about 40 measurements to make sure the suit's going to fit you right. Then we decide, do you want two buttons on the front, three buttons on the front, how many on the sleeve you want, like a custom photo lining for the inside of your jacket, any number of different things that you can think of. This is all about what do you want? And and when you ask guys, what do you want? They don't know because they've never given been given the option before. Because I help men look as absolute best as they can. It's transforming people's lives. If you've never had a suit that fits you right, you have no idea how much confidence it gives you. That's the important part. 702-767-2478. Instagram at custom suit guy, sincitycustomsuits.com. Hi, I'm Sheldon, the owner of Solid Motor Cars. I've spent over 30 years in the retail car business. It is all about the vehicles, but more than that, it's about the people. And my team and I are proud to bring to you what we believe is the finest experience in buying a pre-owned car. With great credit, we can get super low interest rates. But if you've had some challenges, we're experts in that field, and we can get almost anybody approved. Come down to Solid Motor Cars and take a look at our vehicles. They come with a six-month, 6,000-mile warranty. So when you get a vehicle from Solid Motor Cars, you can feel confident that that vehicle is a quality, properly reconditioned vehicle that will serve you and your family for years to come. So for all your automotive needs, whether it's a new car, truck, or SUV, or if it's repairs, service, and maintenance, solid wheels, solid deals, solid people. Coming down to meet the crew, my name's Sheldon. I'm the owner here. I'd love to help you any way that I can. 3024 East Fremont Street, 702-820-1444. Now, back to the Wayne Coy Show. You know, sometimes you got to just shove Booker T to get him to start playing. You know? <laughs> yeah, I don't know if those are going to squeal at you, though, Corey. Are, are, they're too loud? Oh, yeah. What? 
Okay. Well, you know what we can do is we can put them, we can put them over put them to the side. Because yeah. nothing worse than feedback. Um, Corey yeah. the Poet is our guest. Hi, Corey. Yeah, man. How you doing, Wayne? Las Vegas resident after uh, living a lot of years in California. What's your favorite thing about Vegas? What do you like about Las Vegas? Uh, it just don't stop doesn't close yeah you know if you bored in vegas you choose to be bored and bored in vegas so you know and i mean i don't do very much unless i'm out networking or working you know but if there is something you want to do you can find something to do i go to uh i think the last show i've been to was a john legend show when it was out here okay we went to see a john legend show i just saw a motel show the other day so you know, there's always something to do when I on my downtime. Now, John Legend actually would would fall into that category of guys like you. Yeah, yeah, you know, absolutely. John Legend, uh, let's see, like Tyrese, you know, any of Michael those, Buble, Michael Buble, hey, yeah. uh, baby, especially with Babyface, mm -hmm. especially like Babyface. Yeah. yeah, I actually been com my writing style actually been compared to Babyface's okay. writing style. What was it? his group was the Deal, right? Yeah, yeah, they had two occasions. Two occasions. Remember yeah. that. Yeah, and shoot them up movies. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yes. Absolutely. That was the bang bang shoot them up. Yeah, yeah. I was a huge. I'm a when I was still is a huge Babyface fan. Man. Okay. Yeah, because of because of his writing, you know it. He writes for women. Mm -hmm. You know, and that's basically what I write for. for I heard the story that he pulled. Uh, who was it? He pulled aside Justin Timberlake, mm -hmm. and he said, "You have figured it out. Right. It's all about the girls. It's about the ladies. Yeah. I mean, is." Uh, you know, they James Brown even told you it's a man's world, but it's nothing without a woman. Yeah, that's true. I mean, it's, right. they're the most incredible beings on the face of this planet. You know, on that note, I want to uh, well, I want to switch screens first before we do anything else. But I want to talk to you about one of your songs in particular. Absolutely. Uh, it's called Black Woman. Yeah. Is there what's the story behind that? I mean, more than just the obvious. Well, you know, I wrote it for. Uh, Every black woman on this planet, no matter what you've been through, going through, or, you know, how you feel or how people try to make you feel. Because I truly felt that uh, it's an ode to them because they have, they're not worshipped enough, you know, praised enough and put first enough. And that's just by everybody, you know. Yeah. All races, all sexes, you know, and the black women are extremely strong. They're the mothers of the earth, you know. And then when they say queen is actually that's who they are yes so i wrote that particularly for them you know no slight towards any other race because i love everybody but mm -hmm. i had to i had i'm black you know I had yeah, to and, but i think it's that. a song that, that needed to be written and the fact yeah. that you did that i mean again your sensitivity i already know is on you know you're on tweak as it as it relates to you uh look at life through a feminist eyes right i mean right. it's obvious but this particular thing, I'm in 100% lockstep with you. Right. Because uh, where I was raised, mm -hmm. I was exposed to a lot of single moms. Yeah. Lots of them. And and I just remember thinking, you know, what they have to do, first of all, they're already dealing with, uh, you know, the check mark that is your skin is darker. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Then you're dealing with economic issues beyond that. Right. And now you have children that you're responsible for, and they mean enough to you. That you're going to work three jobs if you have to, if you have to, to make sure that they have, uh, you know, clean clothes and shoes on their feet, Absolutely. and they get fed breakfast. I can't tell you how many mornings I spent watching a black woman mm -hmm. do the hair of her daughter to make sure that it was just perfect right. before she would send her out, you know, for her school day. Oh yeah, that's it's just part of yeah, the yeah. part of the experience. And so when I heard this, I'm gonna be honest with you, a little tear came to my eye. Okay, maybe more than one. Right? <laughs> but is it okay if we play it? Absolutely. All right. Please so do. This is Corey the Poet, and you're going to hear the, the story behind the conversation when we, uh, when we get this thing started so you can listen to this. Allow me to elevate you like you so deeply deserve. Regardless of the hardness, you always put your children and your significant other first. Nowadays, a lot of young women choose not to do that. In fact, that's fine until they begin to believe that they're greater than you. Now I'm no destiny's child, but honey, sit back, relax, and let me come cater to you again. Let me elevate you, praise you, and put you first. I know that you're the queen of my castle, and more importantly, you're the ruler of my universe. 
Understand that I love every atom, subatom, particle, molecule that it takes to create what I consider to be great from the bottom of your feet to every single strand of your hair. Black woman, let me put you on a pedestal so no one can treat you like a footstool, but understand I'm going to be honest and fair. I close my eyes to better realize the strength and the power that's in my life. Black woman, there's no mistaking it when it comes to the passion in your cries. No mistaking it when it comes to the loyalty that comes from inside. No mistaking it when it comes to the fire and the firmness of your eyes. She ages so gracefully. She says things so tastefully. She walks with power, conviction, and class. She says things like, this too shall pass. Now reportedly, she carries herself accordingly, but if need be, like a sword unsheathed, she will grit her teeth and tell you to kiss my entire black woman. Black woman. You are my complexity laying right next to me. Respectfully, I do what I have to do. See, not only do I put my faith in God, but black woman, I invest my everything in you. This is an investment that I will carry from here to there. Now, sometimes I may not show it and you may not know it, but believe me, you mean more to me than just breast, thighs, and a nice area. Your intellect is never suspect, but understand, you can be the essence of my resistance or the bane of my existence. Black woman, black, chocolate, brown, red bone, a mahogany. You're the only one who can make love to my mind, body, soul, spirit, and put it on me so damn good that legally I changed my first name to monogamy. Black woman. Black woman. You must be made up from a collective or a derivative of some kind of illegal substance that I just cannot refuse. I've never in my life used an illegal substance, but right now, black woman, you are my substance of peace. Because you're the only being who can caress and impress and then terrorize my mind. You're the only being who can make me happy and angry at the same damn time. You're the only being who can get the absolute best from me and then make me wanna quit. You're the only being who can make a pastor in the middle of Sunday service scream out, oh. Black woman. You're the only being who can build my confidence and then cast doubt. But you're the only being on the face of this planet. That I just cannot live without. So again, allow me to elevate you like you so deeply deserve. Black woman. You kind of go to church in this song, Corey, just a little bit. Just a little bit. You got to oh, preach to him. Yep. I need to know uh, who who's that talented singer that we just heard there. Oh, that's a friend of mine. She's been with me for uh, 11 years uh, singing with me. What's her Ms. name? Niece, and she go by Nisi Living Single. But her name is Nisi Robinson, but she goes by Nisi Living Single out of the Bay Area. Okay. Yeah. And who, who's the... Uh, the guitar player because he's fantastic you know the music is done by levi caesar no way yeah from prince from prince yeah 12 years with prince okay absolutely he, he did that. he was a musical director he, yeah he was a yeah. music director he made uh my first uh cd okay yeah yeah and he's in the bay area too he's in the bay area also yeah. uh what's the name of the there's a prince tribute not purple rain that's here in vegas yeah they got the purple ones the purple ones yeah. that's what i'm thinking of yeah, yeah. 
There's like 15 of them on stage. Yeah, yeah. And he's the musical director, I think, of that as yeah. well. So that's him playing guitar. Why am I not surprised? Right, right. A little uh, little Isley Brothers on Yeah, that's side. him. And then, you know what? Let me get this straight because I always get this wrong, actually. he No, he didn't play the guitar. He was... Uh, it was a studio. I did it in. Okay. His the, the music was between Dre Rivers and Telly, uh, the guy named Telly Touch Music. Okay. They they he Telly he's playing Touch that lead. The music. Levi put the did the guitar. Oh, he did. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, he did the guitar. I want to give the props because that's yeah. fantastic. It reminds me, like I said, a little Isley Brothers. You yeah. Know? You know what they were so good at doing, and I don't know if you agree with this, but. I thought that they did a great job of genre blending, uh -huh. right? Yeah, yeah. So, absolutely. And, you know, Rick James was the master of that, right? Mm -hmm. You know, the story behind Super Freak, right? The whole album was done, right. street songs. Uh -huh. And he goes, We're missing one. He goes, We need one for the white boys. Right. And that's where Super Freak came from. Really? Yeah. yeah. And then they brought the Temptations in. Yeah. And now all of a sudden, it was supposed to be rock, but now it's R&B again. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? So, that's, this was a, definitely got a gospel flavor to it. Yeah. Uh, but most important is that story that you're putting up front in the spotlight right there. Yeah. You know? Yeah, man. You know, because it, need, it needs to be told and it just. And you told it. And yeah, it needs to be said. And I perf I normally perform it at every show. You, you know, as a performer, you got to read the crowd. But yeah. I normally perform it at every show. And every time there's a, a, a Caucasian lady in the, office, yeah. uh, in the audience, one of them will come up to me and say, oh. Can I be an honorary black woman? For the day? <laughs> just for the day. Can I just have the card, <laughs> right. please? Can I carry the card for the rest of the day? Well, you know, it's, um, I told you, I, I exposed to, to what you're talking about there firsthand. And the fact that you took the time to, to write that, to perform it. Uh, I, I just think that it's music like that yeah. that just exudes positivity. Mm -hmm. And so uh, good on you. And that's all it was. That's all it was too. Was just positivity towards black women. Nothing against no other race. Right. It was just, you know what? Uh, you guys deserve this. I was raised by. Hang a black on one woman. second. Yeah. I'm sorry, Filipino woman. You didn't mean it. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody ever took like. <laughs> <laughs> did, uh, did anybody ever come up to you and say, what about us? Well, no. you, you know, uh, honestly, you, you have to take it in consideration when you're doing a show on mm -hmm. how what your audience is like. Sure. You know, I mean, if, for some reason, my audience is 70 percent Caucasian. Probably not going to do black woman. Yeah. You know, if, if it's vice versa, then you're more likely you will do black woman. Does that ever happen? Uh, you know what? For this first show, we took it off because we didn't know what the audience was going to be like. Yeah. So we was like, okay, we'll play this first show by year. We'll just wait and see. Okay. You know, because we're new to Vegas. Right. You know, so we didn't know uh, who was going to show up and we didn't want to offend anyone. Are you starting to meet the Vegas people? That the Because the, the, there's a scene here. Oh, there's a huge scene here. I mean, for example, have you met Skip Martin yet? Uh, I've heard of Skip Martin. Okay. Yeah. I met uh, Mike me Lockhart. Him. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Mike actually plays the bass in the show for me. Perfect. Yeah. Mike and Skip, I, I heard of them through Anthony McNeil. Okay. Yeah. It's kind of a small stand demand. Have you met him yet? Not yet. Okay. Yeah. Producer. He's okay. Here. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, it's not, it's different from the Bay Area because mm -hmm. a lot of these guys are transient. Uh, obviously, everybody is. This yeah. is Vegas. We're Vegas. all from somewhere else, right? Yeah. But there's, there's a, uh, the saying is you can get there from here. This airport is the perfect airport yeah. because internationally it doesn't matter. So a lot of these guys are uh, touring musicians. Right. And they play like in show bands. You know, they might play with, you know, a version of uh, Earth, Wind & Fire, the Gap Band or whatever. Yeah. And they got to pack and go, pack and go, pack and go. Yeah. But they all end up knowing each other. So. Yeah. No, Mike, for you, Mike seemed to know everybody. Mm -hmm. My bass player, he seemed to know everyone out here when it comes to the music. Sure. Or if he doesn't, it's like he said, oh, that's just a phone call. I can find out. But you don't feel like you you've you've uh, left all the good behind, though, right? Oh no no no! There's definitely some good here. Yeah, there's definitely some great here. Actually, yeah. You just have to, you know, like you said, you just have to weed it out, like anywhere else. So you're at the Rio uh, last Sunday of every month. Last Sunday of every month, right? Yeah, and, and it's uh, you're calling it Champagne. It's called Champagne Sundays with Corey the Poet. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Did your wife give you that name too? Corey the poet. Actually, it came. My birth name is Corey. no Champagne Sundays. Oh no, that that was them. Okay, yeah, that was all them. right. Well, that's actually pretty good. Yeah, that, that's what I said when right. uh, the the guy, uh, the entertainment director, said, you know, we want to call it Champagne because they got the shy lights over there. Yeah, they have the shy lights in a, in Hitsville, but shy lights is once a month also. Okay, doing brunch. So he said we call it uh, Champagne Sundays with the with the shy lights. With the shy lights. But uh, he said I think it'll go real well. Champagne Sundays with Corey the poet. Yeah. 
I said, absolutely. Yeah. No, he wasn't wrong. Yeah, that's, absolutely. That's, I mean, it fits what you do. So, but you started to give uh, the story on your name. Yeah. And you know what? My name is actually Corey, just C-O-R-E-Y. Right. But it was a gentleman who works in the radio in the Bay Area at a KBLX, a friend of ours. His name is uh, Jock. And he was like, look, dude, Corey's a great name. You just have to change the spelling so it uh Stand pop. up. Yeah. yeah. He said, because if you just use C-O-R-E-Y, it's too plain. Mm -hmm. So, and I was like, okay, whatever. I think about it. And I Googled my name, Corey, and a white guy came up. <laughs> it wasn't me. Yeah. Yeah. It is the ultimate yeah. white guy name. Right. It came I mean, up. I was like, right back in the 80s, he had the two Corys. I was like, that's not me. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe he right. So I just right. changed it. I said, okay, got to make it. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta make it a little bit sexier. How can I make it sexy? K H K H O R E E. Yeah. It's like uh, Chris Davis, who played for the A's, right? Uh -huh. Every Chris is C H R I S. Right. He's K H R I S. Yeah, yeah. Right? Make a little change. A little bit different. Yeah, it's yeah. a little bit different. So, uh, when's the next show? What's today's date? The fifth. So you got yeah. a couple weeks still. April thirtieth. April thirtieth. Yes. Okay. The lad this last Sunday of this month. So. We want everybody to come out, no matter if you black, white, red, green, yellow. This music is universal. Yeah. It doesn't matter. Man, woman, boy, child. Come right. on out. Yeah. Have a good time. How long is the show? Hour and 15 minutes. Okay. It runs straight through. Hour 15, if you can make it through. Yeah. You, you, your wife might say, honey, we got to go home now. <laughs> right. Right? Yeah. 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 You, the men probably high five you, I'm yeah. thinking, at the end of the show. David, thank you, brother. I appreciate it. Yeah. yeah. So this is Michael Buble. I brought him up because he told me the same thing. He goes, my audience is like 75% women. Yeah. He goes, but. The ones, the women who come, typically, if they have a guy, yeah. they'll bring their guy. I'm a date night performer, right. right? Yeah. He goes, I get the winks, I get the nods, I get the fist bumps. <laughs> yeah. I've had the last show, I had a young lady say to me, Oh, when I go home, yeah, I got something to tell my husband. <laughs> <laughs> I've been taking notes. I've been taking notes. Yeah. <laughs> okay. And uh, where do we find you online? Uh, all my social media is yes. K H O R E E the poet. That's K H O R E E the poet. All social media. Find you anywhere. Anywhere. Yeah. Okay. Well, Facebook, I hope, Instagram. I hope to find you right here again sometime. Anytime. Will man. you come back? Absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. Thank you, Corey. Certainly appreciate it. We'll take another break when we come back. Easter eggs are uh, are not. Well, we're not going to talk about Easter eggs. We're gonna we're gonna talk about something else completely different, which would be. Raider eggs. Okay. Did they lay an egg in the draft or did they hit one out of the park? We'll find out. Quick program reminder, though. Obviously, that uh, was recorded earlier in the month, but that show is about to happen. It's this Sunday, Champagne Show with Corey the Poet. Uh, definitely worth every single cent of uh, admission. But right now, if you're feeling it, I'd love to give you a pair of tickets. We have one pair to give away, and we'll do that at 702 221. 7283. We're celebrating being on FM, folks. Uh 702-221-7283. If you hadn't heard yet, 107.1 FM today, day one. So we have 1400 AM and 107.1 FM. Listen to us uh, however it works best for you. 702-221-7283. We'll get you in to see Corey the Poet at the Rio. This coming Sunday night going to be a great show. Hi there, this is Kirby Scofield with Scofield Realty here in Las Vegas. Real estate is always changing. Be it a buyer's market, a seller's market. At Scofield Realty, it's your market. Buying or selling, we have the team and the tools to work the market so it works for you. We are excited that we're on the Wayne Coy Show. Our results blessed us with the Zillow Flex Partnership roughly about two years ago due to our consistent conversion and customer service scores with conversion that means we can close and with our customer service scores you know you're going to get the best service possible we're always looking for agents led by mentorship resources and experience we are your guide find us kirby for you.com that's k-i-r-b-y the number four the letter u.com kirby for you.com or call 702-766-9538. Again, 702-766-9538. Now back to the Wayne Okay, Corey it's show. draft day. With the seventh pick in the 2023 NFL Draft, the Las Vegas Raiders select... Tyree Wilson, defensive end, Texas Tech. There is Tyree Wilson, the Red Raider, showing off the bling. Started his career at Texas A&M, moved to Texas Tech, 
Martin, born in Anchorage, Alaska, still has relatives there, and I'm sure they are celebrating tonight. Look at the wingspan for an edge rusher, <laughs> two inches longer than LeBron James. He can reach around dudes and get to the... I didn't know where that was going. So just leave it alone. Okay. <laughs> If you're watching us on uh, the interwebs, if you're on YouTube, if you're on Facebook, if you're on Twitch or Twitter, you might be saying to yourself, Self, why is there another head in a box next to Wayne's right now? It's because it's draft night, and there's nobody I know that's more on top of the draft, specifically as it relates to the Las Vegas Raiders, than my one and only eldest son. That would be Ian Matthew Coy who's on there right now. Hey, Ian, how are you, buddy? Doing great. How about yourself? You you don't look happy. Why do I feel like uh, this didn't work for you tonight for some reason? Uh, it It's okay. It's okay. Uh, <laughs> the group chat was fun beforehand. Uh, it was, we're going to screw this up, aren't we? And I don't, I don't think I used the word screw. Um, <laughs> uh, cause it's the, the common story with the Raiders, right? We do whatever, where we're supposed to zig, we zag, uh, and uh, we zagged, but it, not catastrophically. So we kept it between the lines and that's about all you can hope for with well, the they need defense. I mean, there's no doubt about it. That's the deficiency with this team. And so I know everybody was kind of hoping for a big splash with the quarterback, but, the good ones, I think, were gone. I mean, who was left? Will Levis? That's it, right? Yeah, I mean that, and that's. I mean, he's still left as of right now. I think with one oh. left to go. Last I, I looked, that okay. happens in every draft. There's always a quarterback that falls, but um, if Chandler Jones is Chandler Jones, we're not having this conversation right now. We just wouldn't have needed an edge rusher where where we drafted him and he's probably the best four three edge rusher in the draft so it wasn't like i said not catastrophically zagged but um the guy i really wanted uh well I, the guy I really wanted was off the board but uh christian gonzalez was a guy that i had picked out as okay that's the guy we need to get uh he slipped a lot and of course he went to the patriots well of course yeah because why not that was probably worked out, by the way. They probably said, well, let him go so you can have him. They traded back, which is something I thought we could have done as well. Um, we probably could have still got Tyree Wilson with the you know, ninth, 10th, 11th pick. That the seems to be the thing with the Raiders. To me, it's like every year I go, why did we do that there? I remember Darius Hayward Bay. I was like, what? Well, he had a him in another round. Like, why did we have to do it up here? Darius Hayward Bay had a third or fourth round grade, and we're taking him top ten. Like no yeah. team in the NFL had him on the board in the first round, let alone at seven or eight. Raiders or... going to Raider. That's what they say. Yeah. Okay, so we did need defense, so at least they did draft to their need, right? It, yeah, and you don't always want to do that, which is I think maybe a little bit what they were guilty of is drafting their biggest need because corner. You could look at it and say, okay, that's the biggest need, but it doesn't really matter because if you put a corner out there on an island with no edge rushers, you could be the best shutdown corner in the league, and it's going to put unnecessary pressure on you. So I think they're hoping with the upgrades that they have at safety and corner, uh, edge rusher is kind of all we need. We finished, what, fourth, fifth to last in the NFL in sacks? Sacks, yeah. Uh, so we should do markedly better, and hopefully Chandler Jones is back to being himself. I know his brother is. I mean, you know, John Jones came back and killed it. So <laughs> but maybe Chandler can. Yeah, maybe hopefully some of that magic rubs off on Chandler this year. Well, and you got Mad Max on on the other side, right? So the idea being you're going to get a lot of pressure on a quarterback. Yeah, and I'm glad that – okay, so that if you're going to go defensive line, you're either going Tyree Wilson – they're most likely or uh, Jalen Carter. And I was like, that would have really been a Raider pick. Right? He, he went to the Eagles, didn't he? What's that? Didn't he go to the Eagles? Uh, Jalen Carter went nine to, yes, the Eagles. Yep. Mm -hmm. and Val Davis was alive. That was, that's the guy we're picking probably. Sure. <laughs> yeah. Very Khalil Mack, you know, in terms of his talent. So, well, he's, he's, a uh, he's probably going to play inside. In the NFL, he's probably going to be a defensive tackle, I would think. Okay. Uh, but, and he's uh, Daryl Russell. 
great production from from defensive tackle for sure. It's just the off field stuff you got to worry about with him. How do you feel about the the Raiders with the rest of the draft still to come uh, over the next couple of days? You think you think they're going to stock up on on what they need to be more competitive this next season? I think they have to take a quarterback at some point in the draft. Um, could be a guy that's going to be your second or third string quarterback down the road. All due respect to Chase Garbers, but uh, yeah, <laughs> um, I don't know if we want to be stuck if. Jimmy Garoppolo does what Jimmy Garoppolo does well, better than anything, and miss half the season. Unfortunately, yeah, he's great. Jimmy Garoppolo <laughs> does what Jimmy Garoppolo does. Yeah, I love Jimmy. I mean, I really, I, I, I didn't hate that move at all. I just think you have to have a backup that you can have some confidence in behind him. Yeah. Well, interesting with Chase Garbers. I watched the. Uh, I, I didn't really know who the guy was, and I went on YouTube and I was watching videos of him playing at. Uh, Cal, I think, is where he played. Yeah, yeah, I was going to say, uh, we should definitely know about Chase Garbers. <laughs> yeah, but I, I, I missed that chapter in the Cal Bears history, so I went back and, and watched, and I wanted to, as I'm thinking about this now, was he a Cal Bear? Yes, he was. Yep. Uh, he Pretty good. In fact, very good. And I don't know why we don't know more about this guy or why he didn't have a chance to compete to be somebody's starting quarterback because he's he actually looks like an NFL quarterback to me in college. Yeah, uh, I don't remember what round we drafted Garbers, and it was like fifth, I think, which is probably about right where he should have been. I mean, he he's a guy that is he may be able to compete for a job, more than likely a backup job, but he'll compete. He'll be on an NFL roster for a while. Well, you're right, though. With Jimmy G, he won't be playing only in Garbers' time. He'll be playing, who knows? He might be starting, right? Oh, like, there's yeah. a, good, a good likelihood, unless they draft somebody. I mean, that's still possible, I guess. Where's Will Levis? What's up, what's up with him dropping like that? Well, he is a guy that is just it, he's one of those combine measurables, you know, freak of nature talents. He's got an absolute cannon for an arm. Um, I think that he will be given a shot to compete for a starting job. It's probably somebody that's on a shorter term deal that is looking at their quarterback of the future. Um, I almost thought somebody may move up in the first round because you get that fifth round option year. So if you do strike gold, you, you get an extra year before you have to start talking about a contract extension. Ah, a move always up. thinking like a GM, aren't you? Yeah. I thought somebody may move up at the end of the first round, but it didn't happen. So, uh, him and Jay Kaner will probably both be second round picks. I think, um, also you got Hendon hooker as well, which I mean, if you're a Las Vegas Raiders fan, you're going to go run out and buy that hooker jersey. As Heck yeah. It drops. Uh, yeah, or Jimmy G will pick one up for you when he's over in Pahrump. <laughs> hey, um, is he still on the board, hooker? Yeah. And if it wasn't... I hear I hear Josh McDaniels likes him a lot. If it wasn't for his injury, he'd have been a first-round quarterback, potentially second or third off the board. He's certainly Maybe that's the story of the draft. Maybe they grab him in a later round and he ends up being the guy and they don't have to tank to get the kid from USC and all of that. There's two like generational quarterback talents coming out next year. So, uh, you know, maybe it's not a terrible thing that you're rolling with Jimmy G this year, because if he does get hurt then you can get out semi cheap next year, more than likely a year after that. And, you know, if we win two or three games, it's kind of a blessing in disguise because you get one of those guys. It's my, uh, my eldest son, Ian Coy, who is a, uh, He's student of the draft. I'm I'm serious. You probably could have been a an NFL or MLB GM. You just have that brain. You're always thinking about thank you. Hey, this piece equals that piece equals, you know, and that's that's a that's an art to be able to do that. So what's your shirt say, by the way? Uh it it, it says Sons of Liberty Landscaping. Okay. <laughs> Is there well, more? Is that somebody's hair? No, it's a tree. If you know about the the tree of Liberty and the uh, old saying about that must be watered from time to time with the blood of Patriots and tyrants. Ah, okay. So it is a statement. I didn't know. I thought you were going to say, yes, this portion of the show is brought to you by sons Sons of Liberty landscaping with five locations to serve you. You know, yeah. Uh, Interesting uh, hearing you, you said something just a few minutes ago. You said a generational talent quarterback. Do you know the first time that I ever heard that expression? ever in my life, it was being applied to Jamarcus Russell out of LSU. Wow. Whoops. Yeah, they were wrong. Um, he was 
He was the uh, Will Levis of that draft, to he, be honest. He was something. Uh, yeah. I okay. Mean, Will Levis, sure. At least, I mean, at least he had he had he had a college resume. That's the difference between Levis and Jamarcus Russell. Is that yeah? They they were both physical freaks, but uh, Jamarcus Russell single handedly won a bowl game like on national TV over. Yeah. Break. And and I'm sorry, but Will hasn't been drafted yet, and Jamarcus was the first overall pick. So playing at Kentucky versus playing at LSU back then uh, is a big difference too. That's a thing too. Yeah, absolutely. All right, we got to yeah. check up on the scoreboard real quick before we go. Aviators are leading the Tacoma Rainiers right now, six four. And they are bottom of the sixth. And if you're getting ready to celebrate a playoff round win with the Vegas Golden Knights, if that's where you got your money, it's looking good. Four nothing right now in the second period. Uh, the Golden Knights are leading in that game, about to put the Jets to bed. Night night, Jets. <laughs> I'm not gonna say we said it, but we said it. I didn't say it. Mr. Hockey did. He made that prediction on the air. In fact, he's predicting the uh the Golden Knights will be there. At the end, he's, he thinks they're going to play for the Stanley Cup. So we'll have to see. You got any feeling on that one way or the other? Not so. Uh, hockey is like my, right now, it's my weak point. Ever since I moved from the D.C. area, I haven't paid much attention. I was a, a huge uh, Washington Capitals fan. A big, fan. a big what? I'm sorry, you missed you. Big Ovi fan, big o Ovechkin fan. Oh, so. gotcha. Okay. Yeah, see, and you just went, bing, 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 bing. it was Charlie Brown's teacher to me because it's hockey. I don't know. But I'm, I'm happy to jump on the bandwagon, though. Damn right I am. Son, have a great night, okay? Thanks for all your insight on the draft. There that guy goes, Ian Coy. The World Famous Radio Shopping Show weekday on 1400 KSHP North Las Vegas and KSHP.com. We will see you tomorrow night at 7. Have a great night. You're listening to the Sports Byline USA Broadcast Network. USA News. I'm Ryan Daniels. Former President Trump is campaigning.